the end of the year, so as is customary, we here at Clickswipe Play have been looking back at this year's games and looking forward to what's coming up in 2016. <laughs> through the holiday season yet, and if you're pondering what games you absolutely have to play on PC on console from this year's bumper crop, then our editors are here to help with their pick of the top three. And we lead with Danny's Choice, which is certainly one of the standout games of the year, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain. And this is probably the final instalment in Konami's classic gaming series, at least with the blessing of its creator Hideo Kojima, after his departure from the company. And it really sees the franchise off in style. While it might be a little lighter on Bizarre Story than other instalments, MGS5 more than makes up for this with its brilliant open world missions. These present you with a true gaming sandbox that let you tackle situations however you choose, never forcing you down a single path. To increase your options, you have Mother base, a central area of operations that must be built up by collecting resources and personnel in mission. All this is handled via the almost comical Fulton, a little tool that instantly airlifts anything you want, from unwitting soldiers to bemused cattle. Back on Mother Base you can research equipment, train troops, and pick between the various companions who will accompany you on missions. Through research you can expand the weapons and other technologies available, providing more options when you choose to go either stealthy, non-lethal, or all-out warfare in-game. Your companions also play into these decisions, letting you pick between options like faster movement on a horse or your friendly sniper Quiet, who kills everyone who could stand in your way before they ever get a chance to. Metal Gear Solid V is a game that respects your intelligence, letting you figure out how you want to play as you witness the big boss's evolution in philosophy and fall from grace, eventually setting into motion the events of the original 1987 Metal Gear. Plus, it looks and sounds incredible, clearly giving Hideo Kojima the cinematic masterpiece he's been aiming for ever since the original Metal Gear Solid. While Danny looked to the end of a gaming franchise, Maria looked at a game series that was somewhere around the middle of its evolution, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. At some point I stopped counting, but even just counting the main games, the latest Assassin's Creed must nearly have the franchise into double digits. But even with its yearly release schedule, the development teams at Ubisoft continue to create fantastically fun games, at least every other year. And this is a good year, so everybody celebrate as we head to the streets of 19th century London to rule the Assassiny underworld. And it's a perfect locale for the action, allowing for the towering buildings that make climbing in the franchise so much fun, while also having a historical dark side that has been romanticised to the point that you half expect Oliver Twist to join you on your adventures. Unfortunately, all you get is Charles Dickens. Along with the new setting this year, did see a few other significant changes to the franchise. Most notable of these was the fact that for the first time in a mainline Assassin's Creed game, you get to take control of a female assassin. Half take control, that is. This year's heroes are assassin twins Evie and Jacob Fry, and you must take advantage of both of their skills if you want to master the game. Evie is far more the assassin's assassin, while Jacob is more inclined to go in wrist blades first and ask questions later. This allows them to face missions quite differently, with Evie tending to rely more on stealth over her brother's brute force. To help with this, there is also now a wrist grappling hook, allowing the duo to scale tall buildings in a single thwomp zzzzp. Amazing, a tool from the 1800s that I would happily trade for my Apple Watch. True, Assassin's Creed Syndicate is just another Assassin's Creed, but it's a fun one and that's always a good thing. My choice of game that you absolutely must play in 2015 is a slightly smaller title from a new franchise, and the download only Life is Strange. This was an episodic game that was slowly released throughout the year, with its evolving story gradually becoming more and more involved. It's a fascinating tale about a photography student in college who discovers that she has the ability to manipulate short chunks of time. Cue lots of going up to people, asking them a question, reversing time and trying a different course of action until you have the result you absolutely want. It's a power that pretty much every teenager has ever wanted, and it adds a touch of sci-fi to a teen drama. It is an adventure game though, so this use of a rewind ability is not limited to conversations. You must find the required information and objects to continue, so expect some sneaking around bedrooms to find the key you need, then rewinding time all over again so that you don't get caught, 
and trying to do it again faster a second time. All par for the course really, but it is how the game's many situations play out with you manipulating catty rivals at school or learning of people's hidden agendas that really make Life is Strange something special. What makes this story so wonderful is not its teen angst, but that it's unafraid to tackle serious issues. From domestic violence to drugs, Life is Strange runs a surprisingly full gamut of real world issues, while also offering the catharsis of actually possibly being able to find solutions to them. Yes, there's an overarching story about a natural disaster coming to kill hundreds that you must somehow stop, but the spectre of this feels almost secondary to the personal relationships that this game creates. That's it for our three, but I can't let you go without saying a few others that didn't make our list, namely Volume, The Witcher 3 and Crypt of the Necrodance, all of which are well worth a go if you get the chance. You can check out reviews of all the games we've talked about today on softtonic.com and I'll be back in seven days with our pick of the top three iOS games for 2015. I'll see you then.